In the last lecture, I just started discussing about the stability of the phases. So, as you know, phase transformation involves change from one or more than one phases to other phases in a system. So, that means under certain experimental conditions, the parent phases were unstable or metastable and that is why they have undergone changes. So, it boils down to the question which needs to be answered is that what are the condition for stability of the phases for a particular set of experimental conditions and that is what we have been discussing. So, in a nutshell it is ask you a question about equilibrium conditions of the different phases. If the phases are at equilibrium condition under certain experimental conditions they will not undergo any changes only when they are away from equilibrium the phases will undergo transformations. So, equilibrium in thermodynamics means all the three important conditions to be satisfied. First the system must be in mechanical equilibrium that means that energies of all the atoms whether it is a potential or kinetic together must be at the minimum level. Second is a thermal equilibrium and as I explained in the last lecture thermal equilibrium of the phases means that there is no net temperature gradient existing in the phases of the system. And the third conditions to be satisfied is known as chemical equilibrium that means for the chemical reactions taking place in the system both forward and the backward reaction rates must be equal. When all these three conditions are satisfied then only we call the system at thermodynamic equilibrium. Please remember this because we always consider mechanical equilibrium to be the main or the sole aspect for equilibrium in the very nascent manner. We never consider the thermal and chemical parts are important, but thermodynamic equilibrium means all the thing, things to be satisfied. Now question is this, this is all fine in, in, in the aspect of you know theory, how we can put it in terms of mathematical formalism and that is why we have to get into functions. And if you look at if you have studied thermodynamics even a small amount of it you will find in thermodynamics we define a function known as phi energy and this phi energy tells you the available amount of the energy available or amount of energy available rather to do work. So, in metallurgical thermodynamics we always consider Gibbs phi energy to be the main parameter controlling the stability of the phase and the way Gibbs phi energy is defined is given on the screen that is the Gibbs phi energy is always marked with a letter called capital G. It is a function of both temperature and pressure. As metallurgical system we always assume pressure to be at one atmospheric pressure. So, that is why I have written G as a function of temperature which is equal to H as a function of temperature minus T multiplied by S as a function of temperature. So, what are these parameters? H is known as enthalpy of the system. Enthalpy means the basically is defined as like this it is low known as ok let me write down this is defined as H equal to E plus P V ok. So, E is the internal energy of system and P and V are the pressure and the volume of the system. So, therefore, H is nothing but the total energy of the system in the sense of internal energy plus the pressure and volume term and internal energy is obviously summation of the kinetic and the potential energy of the atoms. H can be correlated because it is A E plus P V is very difficult to measure experimentally. So, that is why H is always correlated with a measurable quantity known as C P that is the specific heat at constant <coughs> pressure and C P as far as the first law of thermodynamics is given by 
del q by del t at constant pressure and as constant pressure if you know that del q is nothing but del h del t how it comes is very simple this way we know that at uh, first law of thermodynamics tell you del q is, is equal to uh, del e plus okay p d del w okay so remember this del is basically corresponds to the functions which are not stress functions and d corresponds to the functions which are straight functions this is the way we differentiate them and this can be written as d e plus p d v okay so therefore at constant pressure is very is constant pressure this is nothing but equal to d h because if we differentiate the top equation h equal to e plus p v so del h is del e plus del p v p d v plus v d p so at constant pressure p d p d p is equal to 0 that means it is equal to d e plus p d v so that is how you get c p is equal to del h by del t so that means del h is nothing but c p d t so this can be calculated by knowing the value of c p integrated over temperatures t 1 to t 2 in actual sense we measure h or enthalpy just by knowing the cp of the system if you know the cp of the system very well we can calculate the enthalpy of the systems very nicely now next term is known as enthalpy the next term is known as sorry the entropy before i discuss that i would like to tell you that we are never interested in calculating in thermodynamics the absolute values of the these functionals like h or s or g we are always interested to know the change or rather delta values of these functions. So that is why H2 minus H1 is already shown you here is a basically C p d t integrated over T1 to T2 or you can calculate H2 as a function of H1 plus this integral. So that is these are the routine uh, formulae you should know to solve the problems in the course. So as a general functions of H as a function of temperature we always write h t as a, is equal to h reference plus c p d t integrated over t reference to any temperature t where h reference is a reference value that is normally taken as enthalpy at a constant temperature and pressure normally we take at 25 degrees celsius temperature and 1 atmospheric pressure but remember this a reference has no meaning because we never bothered we never will be interested to know absolute value of h we will be always interested to calculate delta h so delta is nothing but at h t minus h difference so that means we are always interested to calculate the integral value which is shown in the function that is this one so that is what is important when you know uh, when you calculate the free energy functionals so now uh, entropy is obviously the second term s is known as entropy of the system and remember entropy is always a difficult concept for the students to understand we will discuss about entropy later what is the physical meaning of it, it first you have to understand what is the what is the mathematical meaning of it you know second law of thermodynamics defines the entropy and we know the second law of thermodynamics tells you that entropy is defined as like this dl is equal to del q reversible by temperature so where the change of entropy ds is given by del q reversible this is reversible heat uh, uh, heat change divided by the temperature t so that means this t th th this change is defined as a particular temperature t this is the real definition of entropy which directly originates from the second law of thermodynamics so we can simply write down we know that this del q reversible sorry del q reversible is equal to t ds right so del q we know that cp is basically equal to del p del q by del t at constant pressure that means del q is equal to cp dt so therefore we can write down by connecting these two del q and this del q the cp dt is equal to t ds so how do you get that then the ds is nothing but cp by t dt remember ds entropy is a state function that is why you use a d not del but q heat change is not a state function it is a path dependent function that is why you will use del so these are the very basic thing you should know from thermodynamics as I said in the first lecture you must have some basic idea of thermodynamics I am not going to go back on each of these things and explain you uh, uh, of this, uh, these situations ok so finally we can write down this way that entropy is nothing but entropy is nothing but integral cp by t over t1 to t2 
again we were interested in calculated change not interested in calculated the absolute value of entropy and we can always write down the same equations like we have done in case of enthalpy. So finally G is a function of enthalpy and entropy for a different values of temperature and pressure. When pressure is constant it is only a function of temperature for pure materials right. So by knowing Cp I can calculate enthalpy and entropy of the both uh, these parameters using these simple integrals or simple integrations rather. Once you know that you can actually do all kinds of stuff, all kinds of uh, uh, mathematics let us do that. It is always better to use plots because plots will give you the direct link between the physical meaning of these functions and the applicability. So let us suppose I am plotting temperature on the x axis and plotting these functions enthalpy entropy and free energy obviously free energy depends on enthalpy entropy on the y axis. So let us suppose Cp most of the material Cp can be approximated as a function of temperature like A plus Bt. This is until first order approximation one can actually keep on adding terms okay. But for simplicity we will assume Cp is equal to A plus Bt this is nothing but a straight line you can see here the slope is B intercept is equal to A okay. So now I integrate it the way its functions are shown. So H will be equal to H0 plus AT plus half BT square okay I do not I do not want, don't want to do the maths you do yourself in your problems you will get it known. So this will look like this that is the red curve the <coughs> white curve is basically entropy. Entropy is given as S0 plus A log of T plus BT because it is Cp by T so therefore A log of T will become DT by T is log and integrated over certain temperature. So these are the values of the functions we can easily get. We can actually approximate this way. Now how do I get minus Ts? Minus Ts is nothing but S into T taken minus. So that is what it looks like the dotted red line a red curve is shown below. Now uh, what is the uh, G? G is nothing but H minus Ts because Ts I know H I know so therefore I can know G and G is shown like this H0 plus A minus H0 T minus half BT square minus AT log of T. So if I plot that this will look like this that white line which you see here is what is GT. So what do you see from this curve? It is basically a curve with a negative slopes. That is obvious because entropy absolute value is always positive and G is given as H minus TS. So therefore if I simply take differential of this the slope of the curve will be equal to minus entropy. So that is why it has a negative slope and neg entropy is always positive value it cannot not be negative absolute value entropy that is why it has a negative slope and this is what is you should know very well. Now we can see here there is a crossover between minus Ts and the G that is where H is equal to Ts because G uh, H is equal to Ts means the enthalpy and the, and the entropic parts are equal that is why it happens. Now I can write down this because H is equal to 0 where so G is equal to minus Ts I am sorry I said wrongly. So here on this point H, this is nothing but G is equal to minus Ts because H is uh, considered to be 0 here you can see here H is 0 here on this point because this is lying on the temperature axis. So therefore any point lying on this temperature axis for any of these functions value is 0 okay. So let us examine so that is what is the G looks like so therefore is what you look take away from this message from this plot all this looks like very uh, this done with the only thing you should to take away is this curve G as a function of temperature at a fixed pressure it looks like this kind for a pure component remember we are not discussing about unpure components we are discussing only about pure components. Let us look at G of different phases what we look at because we are considering stability so stability means we have to compare different, different G values. So this is uh, these are my two G, the red curve corresponds to G of liquid, and the this is G of liquid. You can see here this is G of solid. Let us consider for the sake of understanding. In a beaker you have a ice as I shown you, and you have water. Okay, and both are H two O. This is solid H two O. This is liquid H two O. Pure components, no difference, and they are in touching. They are in actually in equilibrium. Let us suppose if they are in equilibrium. And if I plot a G 
of the solid and liquid there will be a crossover as you can see. It will come clear to you why this crossover is present. This is the crossover where G is equal to G of solid is equal to G of liquid correct. So, at that point both the phases have same value of free energy and as I told you at the beginning of my lecture the G or the free energy or Gibbs free energy value dictates the stability of the phases. That means, by comparing the relative positions of the G as a function of temperature at a particular pressure, I can clearly, clearly say which page will be stable, which page will be unstable. Let us do that now. So, at the crossover both are equal and that is what is going to happen at 0 degree Celsius temperature and 1 atmospheric pressure because at 0 degree Celsius temperature 1 atmospheric pressure both ice and water are stable or coexist. They will not, there will be no net reactions between ice and the water. They will be at mechanical, thermal and chemical equilibrium because that is what is the equilibrium of melting temperature of ice or freezing temperature of water at one atmospheric pressure. So, that is why at one atmospheric pressure G of S or G of the ice or G of the water or liquid will cross over and that crossover tells you they are equal. So, that means there is no net difference between the free energy of these two phases. Now, below 0 degree Celsius temperature or 273 Kelvin G s is less than equal less than G l that means the free energy of the solid is lower than the free energy of the liquid that you can see here free energy of solid is at the uh, they are lying at the below the free energy of the liquid. So, that means below 273 K or 0 Celsius ice is more stable than water. That means, if I cool down the water below 0 degree Celsius water will slowly transform to ice that is the first phase transformation I have been telling you always. So, that is very evident from the G that is why you always think about Gibbs free energy Gibbs you will come to know about Gibbs William Gibbs from many of the internet sources he was uh, one of the great scientists in the field of thermodynamics and material science and these functionals puts down the theory in mathematical formalism in such a way you can explain most of the observed phenomenon. Okay, now, if I go on the other side that is above 0 degree Celsius temperature, we know above 0 degree Celsius temperature or water is more stable, ice will melt down to water. How we can explain that? It is very clear from these two relative disposition of these two curves G of solid is higher than G of liquid. So, as the G of solid higher than G of liquid, liquid will be more stable because the stable phases will always have lower correct. So, this is what you see very clearly on this plot you do not have to uh, do a rocket science to understand this is very very simple and very easily understandable in graphical form that is why we, we always go for graphical uh, representation of these equations mathematically most of the uh, things uh, looks like little complex, but the moment we plot on a two dimensional plot as a function of temperature as a constant pressure things will very very clearly understood. So, this same thing I can do it and that is I mentioned already the temperature at which both the solid and liquid free energies are equal are known as the melting or solidification temperature here it is written as T m. Okay. Now, if you look at the slopes of this curve as I told you the slopes of this curve is again I just and in the last slide only I discussed I am just showing you in detail so that you understand it very clearly this is not the sol entropy of the solid is equal to minus G s delta G of the G the, uh, this is functional actually the, the first derivative of G as a function of temperature this is at one atmospheric pressure therefore, there is no need of writing P as a sub subscript because pressure is constant similarly entropy of the liquid is equal to th this. So, rather I can write down G s T at constant pressure is nothing but minus s and because s is always positive this slope is negative because you have minus sign and similarly g of liquid divided by or the first derivative of g of liquid some temperature is equal to minus or this is ss sorry this is sl okay entropy of anything solid liquid gas does not matter absolute value is always positive only third law of thermodynamics tells you entropy of a pure crystalline solid at absolute 0 degree Celsius temperature is 0. 
above the absolute zero temperature, any system will have a positive value of entropy. Okay, now, can I do this thing in terms of delta? That is the change because I have been mentioning to you that this uh, change is what is we are interested, change of this uh, relative change of these functions, not the absolute values. So, let us do that. Okay. If I do that, so let us consider this in terms of delta g. Okay. For a simple uh, system, let us plot again everything g I have already written there, delta g you look like this. Okay, you please do not ask me to do the maths, you can do yourself. Now, delta G is nothing but G L minus G S that is equal to H delta H minus T delta S at a constant temperature and constant pressure. Now, I have again plotted G of solid G of liquid, there is a crossover here, you can see here. So, now it considers temperature, any temperature, this temperature suppose, this white dotted line shown here, this is a temperature related T1. At the temperature delta G is nothing but this difference shown by arrow. Delta G is the G of L minus G of S. Okay. So, these are all shown you here. At temperature T2, this is what is the difference, the arrow, small arrow. So, arrow has got reduced numerical value of arrow. And at the melting temperature or the solid this is Tm, this is vanished. There is no delta G that is equal to 0 basically. Now, if I go to the other side, what is happening? I put arrow in the downward sign, that is the reason behind it, it will come very clear to you now. So, you can see as you go away from the melting temperature on the right side, again delta G is increasing, but the sign is changing. Okay. So, this is where G is equal to G L at the melting temperature, below the melting temperature delta G, remember delta G is G L minus G S. This, this thing you should not forget. That is why is written delta G superscript L to S, solid water, liquid water to solid ice. It is equal to less than 0. Am I clear? It is very clear because you can see here the G L is higher than the G S, right? Yes. Okay. Now, let us see on the right side. Now, right side delta G is basically equal to positive. Okay. Why it is showing positive negative or am I doing some mistake? Okay, let us correct it. Okay. I mean everybody can have mistakes. So, the way delta G is defined is between product minus parent phase. So, that means G S minus G L it will be. I have written wrong. So, you can correct it in the actual. So, this is G S minus G L. So, if that is the case then delta G below T M temperature less than Tm is less than or equal to 0 or less than 0 actually and above the melting temperature or above Tm it is greater than or equal to 0. That is clear because this is Gs is higher here than Gl so therefore it is greater than or equal to 0. Gs is lower here than the Gl so therefore less than or equal to 0 and at the melting temperature this is equal. So this is how we can calculate. Okay, let us explain in detail manner this one. So what you can understand from this very clearly that above the melting temperature because delta G is 0, therefore solid will never be stable, correct. There is no driving force available for the liquid to transform into solid. On the other hand, below the melting temperature, there is it is less than equal to less than 0, that means you have a finite force available, finite energy available to it. So, what is the meaning of negative and positive. Let me explain in thermodynamics terms of you. That is what probably you have already seen. Negative change of any function, especially G in thermodynamics means you have available energy to you. System has energy available to it. Positive means system has no energy available to it. This is the convention we use in thermodynamics. So, that means that below the metallic temperature, there is a diving force available, energy, net energy available for the system to transform to solid. On the other hand, above the melting temperature, above the Tm, there is no energy available for the system to transform the liquid to solid. Okay. So, this sign of delta G tells you the direction of transformations. At the melting temperature, that is what is shown as dG or you can write down delta G is equal to 0. So, therefore, at the melting temperature, 
there is no change of positive and negative change of phi energy. This is vanishing, and because of this vanishing phi energy change, there will be no energy available for the system for transformation. The system will not undergo any transformation. That is what happens at zero degree Celsius temperature and one atmospheric pressure. Ice and water will coexist. They will never transform to each other. On the other hand, up below the melting temperature, there is a negative sign of delta G. Delta G is is less than zero. A negative sign means there is a driving force available for the system to transform. But above the melting temperature, there is it is greater than zero. That means there is no driving force available for the system to transform from liquid to solid. In a NAS cell, we should not spend more time on that. In a NAS cell, the sign of delta G tells you the direction of transformation. If for a particular reaction, suppose A plus B going to C, if the sign of delta G is negative in this direction, A to B, A plus B going to C, that means reaction will happen. If on the other hand, the sign of delta G is positive, the reaction will not happen. This plot is telling you that answer. In a simple ice water analogy, I am giving you this concept that sign of delta G is going to dictate the direction of phase transformation. Finally, the answer of phase transformation direction, whether solid will transform to liquid or liquid transform to solid, can be obtained by simply calculating the delta G and plotting in this manner. Okay, so now that's for very easy things can be done for the pure. Systems. What will happen? We have an unpure system like alloy or mixture of two phases or two components like water with salt, coffee with sugar. Okay, when you have two components mixed together, can I use the same analogy? Answer is no. So this is what we are going to discuss in the next lecture. Whether can we calculate G and delta G of those systems and get the similar answer? Remember, the, the conditions will remaining same. The conditions of phase transformation directions will remain same. Things which is going to change is how do you calculate the G, H, and S parameters for those systems. Okay, that we will discuss in the next class.